When considering setting up a home lab, there's many different ways you could do it. And I had a viewer ask the question, why use virtual machines? And I hope that this kind of explains things to you. You have your home server for your lab and you could set it up and you put everything on it. And hey, that works great. Or you could have your home server set up and then have it break off virtual machines and each virtual machine does one task and one task only. So you could separate your base operating system, Debian, Fedora, Ubuntu, doesn't matter. And then have a sub virtual machine do one task, Pi-hole. This one just does Docker and you install all your Docker containers. This one does your next cloud and that's all it does. And why I would choose this corporate network setup versus just installing everything to the server on bare metal is that if any of the little packages in here, any of the software gets a bad update and it corrupts and it crashes your server, you lost everything if you didn't have a current backup, which no matter what, you should have backups in place. But if you set it up in the corporate way to where you segregate everything off, if you get a virus or if you have corrupt updates, it's only gonna kill that one service. And virtual machines, once you have them set up, if you shut them down, you can make a backup of that virtual machine. If something corrupts, you kill the virtual machine, you replace the virtual machine backup, and then fire it back up, you're back up and going, no problem. And then this does require a lot more work, but in the long run, if any of these little virtual machines crap out on you and you get a bad update and you're like, oh fuck, what do I do? You just shut down that virtual machine. You delete the virtual machine file, the, the storage on it. It's probably a cow 2 file. And then you would replace it from one of your backups, fire it back up and everything else is still running on your network. That way, <laughs> you know, if, if you get a bad update and everything's just on your main host server, you're gonna shoot yourself in the foot and be like, oh, well, fuck, my whole system's down now. Other than just one piece of my system is down now. And there's a couple ways you can go about this. And I'll, I'll, I'll cover the Proxmox way and then the way that I went. So I did do a Proxmox setup on mine initially uh, last year, and I wanted to see all the different ways that it interfaces with your hardware and how you pass things through, just to see what its ecosystem was like. So with Proxmox, it's gonna require two video cards. You're gonna have a video card for Proxmox itself, so you can have just a basic integrated video card or the cheapest entry-level video card you can find for Proxmox. And then in another PCIe slot, you're gonna have your nice graphics card and that would pass down to your media server because you're probably going to use your video card for doing plex and transcoding. You're going to need something to do that with your codecs to stream your AV1 or MKV files, whatever you've got in plex or Jellyfin. I prefer Jellyfin. That's going to require a dedicated video card. And you're going to have to pass that through. And that dedicated video card only goes down to that one VM. So for a less expensive setup, you would go the route that I went. I've installed a Debian operating system. I use the DietPy OS installer. It's phenomenal because it's got all these different services already pre-configured for you and you don't have to have two video cards. Your base installation you could put Plex or Jellyfin, and it uses the video card that's in your system. And all your other virtual machines, your Pi Hole, your Docker, your Nextcloud, they don't require a video card. Nextcloud would if you want all the crazy bells and whistles in it, but for the way I've got mine set up, this setup only requires one video card. And like I said, having virtual machines, it does require more maintenance, but you're much less likely to crash your entire system if you separate it out like this. So I hope that clears things up for people getting in to home labs for the first time or you know, if, if you haven't been in the corporate network environment and you don't understand why things should be done a certain way, this is a very basic general overview of why the smarter route would be to go with virtual machines. Now, it could either be the Proxmox route or it could be a custom route with like Debian Linux for your server, Fedora for your server. So I hope this brief overview clears things up. There's a lot of different ways that you can set things up. I find it this way to be the best, most reliable, and on top of that, the most secure way to set things up. All right, go mess around with your servers. Go have fun. See ya.